I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about our connection slowly faded. So this is an important topic and it's something that you really got to be aware of in a relationship that, you know, when we have a connection, it's a feeling, right? And, you know, we have our thoughts behind the relationship and our beliefs and our desires and the things and our hopes and dreams that we want to come from it. And so often life gets in the way, right? Like you get busy with school and work or other priorities and it can really hurt the connection. So it's really important to understand that if you're going to be in a long-term relationship, that that relationship has to be a priority for you. And really it needs to be a priority for both people to give it the energy, to help take care of it, to nurture it, and to keep it going strong. Because if you don't, and if you don't have the skills, this is really important, to have a healthy relationship, it's going to cause pain to the other partner. Just like if they don't have the skills to be a good partner, it will hurt you. And when you don't feel safe in a relationship, you know, you don't want to open up. You don't want to be vulnerable anymore. And I think that's kind of why in the beginning, it's a little bit easier to be vulnerable. First of all, you're excited about dating somebody new and you have all these fantasies and ideas of who they're going to be. But then on top of that, you're kind of starting fresh with somebody new. But over time, things are going to happen that cause the relationship to be disrupted or cause pain or do different things that can hurt your connection with that other person. This is why I'm always telling you guys, you got to do the work because it's not easy to always maintain emotional self-control or not lash out, get hurt or angry or manipulate when things aren't going your way. It takes real internal muscle to do that in real time. So we're going to look at a situation today and I'm going to point out some things that I think uh, cause this relationship to slowly lose that connection. And, you know, you obviously want to think about your relationships and if there have been things that you've continually done to hurt that connection. Right. Because oftentimes we have areas that we don't see and struggles that we uh, have that we don't realize. And obviously the workbooks or the creative healing course are really going to help you identify and grow through a lot of those areas. And I also have a playlist that's very helpful. It's called Be a Master in Relationships. So I highly recommend you spend a lot of your time in there to become a better partner, because even if your ex doesn't come back, you definitely want to be in a good position to reattract or, or attract new people. Obviously, you want to reattract your ex, but you definitely want to attract new people with all the skills and your new changes that you've made within yourself. So this email coaching is from a couple that's in their mid 20s and they've been together for three years, so a long time. And part of that relationship was long distance, about half of it. Now they don't have any kids and they never lived together, but they would see each other pretty much on the weekends. Now he said, it was a guy who did the coaching, problems arise during the last six months. I solely cared about my career. That's important. Think about what he's telling you right there. The relationship obviously really 
was kind of unimportant to him because he said, I solely cared about his career and didn't show much love and affection. So you can imagine six months of this is going to really cause that connection to fade away for the other person to feel, you know, tired and frustrated and disappointed. He said, I was oftentimes in a bad mood when hanging out with her as I felt I could be more productive. So now it's showing you a little bit more that he's not really prioritizing this woman, right? He's in a bad mood, almost acting like annoyed that he has to hang out with her because he thinks the other things he could be doing would be more productive. Well, as we often see after a breakup, we really get priorities in order, right? How many of you guys felt like other things were important while you were with your, uh, in your relationship with your partner, and now afterwards you're like, I don't even care about that stuff. I don't care about any of those things, my hobbies or all those things. And so sometimes we can lose sight of things like that in our relationship, and then we come back and regret it. She told me two times this needs to change. I never really tried. So again, she's warned him, she's told him what she needed, and he didn't even try. So imagine, this has been going on for six months. How long can you tolerate not feeling like somebody cares about you? You know, it gets old. You don't wanna take anybody for granted. I know it's not easy in a long-term relationship, but you gotta kinda remember that you always wanna treat your partner as good as you do in the beginning, or you know, at least do your best to be aware of those things, you know, because it keeps things fresh. If you take somebody for granted, eventually they're gonna leave. Nobody has to stay. And you think that somebody, you know, just because they enter a relationship with you that they're gonna stick around forever, but that's not always true, you know? She started mirroring this behavior so that we slowly separated and got more distant. She finally broke up because she said she was trying too much to make things work, which costed her too much energy. Also, due to separating, she lost her feelings, but says she still thinks I am an awesome person. Okay, well, it sounds like she kind of values who you are, but also values who she is and is saying, you know, I can't do this anymore. I spent a lot of energy on you trying to make this work, trying to go the way I was hoping it would. And, you know, you haven't really been invested in this. So he wants to know, how do I deal with things? I went no contact directly afterwards, but I am unsure whether to reach out as soon as I feel ready being healed from the breakup since I wasn't needy and stuff. Okay. Well, so what's telling me that his thinking is, well, I wasn't needy here, so should I just reach out to her when I feel ready, okay? Well, let me go on a little bit further here because there's some more stuff that I think is important. At least it was me who hurt her initially by not caring anymore. A and that's important. You know, he's saying he didn't care in the relationship and don't think she didn't notice that or feel that. And so if you're sitting there going to try and, you know, be like, oh, I've changed. I'm so different now. She's going to be like, when we were together, you didn't care. Now all of a sudden you care. And wouldn't you be thinking that? Because I would. Also, how do I react if she reaches out? Being no contact and showing her I am willing to change and care more for her are kind of conflicting. I fear that by being in no contact, her impression of me not caring will be affirmed. And that, yes, I know that is a scary thought because, you know, in a situation like this where you feel like you didn't make an effort and now you're beating yourself up and wishing you had done things different, now you're afraid if I leave her alone, will she think I don't care anymore? 
it's it's a tough call, right? It is because I could see why he'd want to reach out here, but in my experience, it's better to let her to reach out, okay? Because if he reaches out, I think it'll be probably more of her saying things like, well, why do you want to see me now? We were together in the last six months. He didn't care about me. So I would just be patient because I think she cares about him. She said it and she respects him. But that feeling isn't there right now. Right now. Right? Let me go on. Even though I told her that I feel sorry and still love her. So he did tell her. On top of that, she can be very stubborn. Well, people like their autonomy and they don't like to be told what to do. I know I don't. And I'm sure she doesn't either. So no, you're not going to manipulate her into doing what you want. Contrary to what some other coaches say, you can't make anybody do anything. And if they tell you you can make somebody do something, you should probably not pay attention to their advice because look at how manipulative that is. And they're trying to manipulate you by telling you that. Okay. Yesterday, five days of no contact, mind you. Five days. Okay. I got a message from her. If you got a call by me, this was accidental. Sorry. And he didn't answer that. He could have answered that and said, no worries. I think I would have said something polite like that. But I'm going to go back to that five days in a second here. Also, part of the question is whether no contact is advisable in general in my situation, or at least for how long. Okay, so he's only been in no contact for five days, and she's already reached out. I think she purposely called him, and when he didn't pick up, or if she didn't call and just pretended like she did, it was already kind of an indirect direct. Now, he's only been in no contact for less than a week from what it sounds like. He's got to do a lot of work here, okay? Because the vibe I'm getting is that this guy doesn't really understand uh, how to be a good partner, okay? Uh, he neglected her. He prioritized other things. He flat out kind of said several times here that he just didn't care about her or the relationship. And so why would she be eager to go back to this? Uh, I mean, I think she cares about him. I just think she got very tired of it. And so I think he really needs some skills here. And I don't think he's ready to try and get her back and keep her. Uh, I do think she's going to reach out soon, but I don't think he's ready and I feel like he's got a lot of blind spots. Now that's just my instinct because I've done coaching for a long time and it's telling me that, you know, he's just done a little bit of research here and there and he thinks he's ready to get her back. Well, my gut on this one is that I think she will reach out sooner than later, but he's not doing what he's gotta do to really show her that he's going to be a, a caring partner who's emotionally attuned to her and learning all the skills that we teach. Now, maybe he is, and maybe I'm wrong here, but the way he wrote this, uh, it just seems suspect to me that he's ready for this. Uh, I'd leave her alone and give yourself some time and space to really reflect on things and what went wrong and why the connection faded away. Because if you don't do things differently with her, it's going to happen again. And it doesn't sound like you guys have been broken up even long enough to have had some time to reflect on those things. You, you've been together for three years, right? And you don't want her to come back too soon and jump into it again. And then you wind up getting back together and breaking up for good. No, you really want to work on being ready for this to show her that you can be emotionally attuned to her and show that you're gonna nurture that connection, make her a priority and not make her feel like you don't care or flat out say you don't care. Um, and I think you all should, should think about why 
you didn't care about this person in the relationship. Is it her? Is she not the right person for you? Is it reflective of how your parents got along, that they weren't very loving and affectionate with each other? But I do think you need to take some time to work through this stuff and really learn how to stay in tune with that connection because it's really that connection that makes people want to be close to you and open up to you and have a you know a great relationship that's really meaningful. So spend some time working on some stuff. Take a good look at the mistakes you made at the relationship, what you can do differently. Obviously, the workbooks and the Creative Healing Course will help you tremendously with those areas. The Be a Master in Relationships playlist will help you a lot because I honestly think that one of the biggest mistakes you guys make is not watching the videos that really teach you the skills. I released a couple recently and I'm watching. People aren't watching those videos and they're really important things. You guys only want to watch No Contact. Well, that may get you through the moment, but it's not going to get your ex back and keep them, which is essentially what you want, all right? So you want to focus on how to have a great relationship with your ex or other people. It's a win-win either way. Of course, I'm here to help you with coaching. I do email coaching and I do Skype. And Coach Margaret is available for Skype coaching. So you can click on Margaret on the top of the website to get help with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.